This is, a, this, is a, this is when the history doesn't help, when they give you all this history and it just makes a little bit of confusion. This is a 77-year-old male. He was formerly a heavy smoker and drinker. He had presented as an outside institution with right orbital, temporal, and throat pain. He had an elevated sed rate. They biopsied his temporal artery because they thought he had temporal arteritis. The biopsy was inconclusive. He had a flexible endoscopy of the upper air digestive tract that showed no tumor and um, on physical examination, he was found to have a three centimeter palpable mass in right level two, high level five. Now he had an outside scan from another institution that reportedly showed a three and a half centimeter mass in the right nasopharynx that extended into the peripharyngeal space. Now here we got a problem. They look in, into the patient and they see no tumor and yet CT is reporting that there is a nasopharyngeal mass that's fairly large. So this patient comes to us and he has an MRI and, and check out this lesion. This is pre-contrast T1 post-contrast T1 fat sat. So what's the diagnosis here? Is it a deep lobe parotid tumor? Is it a lateral retropharyngeal lymph node? Is it a nerve sheath tumor or paraganglioma? We're now gonna start the clock. You have 10 seconds to vote. Is it one, deep lobe parotid tumor? Two, lateral retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy? Three, nerve sheath tumor or paraganglioma? All right. So this is kind of a tough scan, this is a tough scan and I brought it up for a reason because I think it has very good teaching points to it. This is lateral retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy. It's pretty big so it's easy to kind of get lost in it a little bit. So why is this a lateral retropharyngeal lymph node? Well, sorry about that. Um, if you notice, this is not the jugular vein, this is the internal carotid. Here's the normal side. This is the internal carotid, this is the longus coli, longus capitis, depending where you are in the oropharynx, nasopharynx. And in between the carotid internal and the prevertebral muscles, this is where the lateral retropharyngeal lymph node lives. So if you have a big lymph node here, it's going to shove your internal carotid out, and uh, it may go into your uh, muscle here, but the fat's going to be pushed more out laterally and anteriorly. So if you look here, and if you're not careful, you might think, oh, this is the jugular vein, and you should expect to see the internal here and think it's in a different space. It's not. The internal is being pushed out posterior laterally. This is the parapharyngeal fat that's being pushed out laterally, and this is between the muscle and the right internal carotid artery. So which tumor is associated with lateral retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy? Is it floor of the mouth cancers, parotid cancers, maxillary sinus tumors, thyroid cancers, or supraglottic larynx? We're going to start the clock. Is it one, floor of mouth, two, parotid cancers, three, maxillary sinus cancers, four, thyroid cancers, or five, supraglottic cancer? Okay. It's a pretty good spread here. Actually, it's thyroid. It's the only one in this list. Okay, so common primary sources of lateral retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy metastases. Number one is nasopharynx. The first nodal uh, drainage echelon is the lateral retropharyngeal lymph nodes for nasopharyngeal carcinomas. Um, although tonsil cancers, hypopharynx, and thyroid cancers go to the cervical lymph nodes and thyroid also go to the central compartment, they also can go to the lateral retropharyngeal lymph nodes. So I'm just going to show you um, this case again. And for those of you who got the answer right, you probably noticed in this enhancing lateral retropharyngeal lymph node this hypo-intense area. What is that? Well, if you look on CT, same patient is chunky calcification. So of the four cancers we just talked about that have lateral retropharyngeal nodal metastases, the only one in a non-treated patient that has calcification in their lymph nodes are the patients with thyroid cancer. So this is a thyroid uh, cancer nodal metastasis to the lateral retropharyngeal lymph nodes. So just to kind of bring it home, I want to show you um, these cancers that have lateral retropharyngeal lymph nodes. This is a patient with a left posterior lateral nasopharyngeal tumor. You can see the right fossa rosemuller on the right is beautifully demarcated, obliterated on the left. And here you go. Here's normal internal carotid artery. Um, you've got your prevertebral musculature. Here's an abnormal lymph node. This is the lateral retropharyngeal lymph node. Some people say a measurement of 8 millimeters. Some people say 1 centimeter. Greater than those, either number is considered pathologic or abnormal in an adult. Um, this is a patient with a left palatine tonsil squamous cell carcinoma. And notice here's the internal carotid, prevertebral musculature. They have a cystic nodal metastasis. Well, you know what? Patients with squamous cell carcinoma of Waldeyer's ring tend to ha can have cystic nodal metastases, more commonly seen, what, what am I talking about, the tonsil cancers, base of tongue, and then sometimes the nasopharyngeal carcinomas. 
Now here's a patient with a hypopharynx cancer. This is, the, this is clearly like an abnormal right piriform sinus, and this person has lateral retropharyngeal lymphadenopathy with a node interposed between the internal carotid artery and the um, longus coli, longus capitis muscle.